Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our series of Microsoft Intune. And in this video, we are going to talk about Windows device compliance policies. Now, if we talk about compliance in general, it simply means adhering or conforming to a specific rule, specification, policy, or standard. So your enterprise can have certain security standards defined that needs to be checked for every endpoint or for every device that is used to access any protected resource and that's the reason why you create device compliance policies so the core agenda of this video will be knowing how to create device compliance policies since we are talking about windows i will be sharing you the methods that you can follow to create policies for windows as a platform the portal that we will be using will be microsoft endpoint manager portal now since you have device compliance policies in place let's say there is any device which is non-compliant how you should go ahead and check the state of a specific device how you should check the device compliance failure details now let's say a device is non-compliant how you should make sure that the user is getting notified that they are using a non-compliant device so we'll also talk about configuring notification settings lastly we'll talk about how to take the dump of all this configuration that you are doing with the help of microsoft graph and when it comes to troubleshooting which logs needs to be checked on a specific device now before we go ahead and see everything in action let's understand fundamentally how it is going to work so step number one will always be enrollment of device that means making sure the device is onboarded to intune now this could be an automatic enrollment or the user can enroll the device manually as well now once the device is onboarded to intune the next step will be verifying the device compliance state now intune as a service communicates with the client with the help of two protocols the first one is msmde which is specifically used when the device is getting enrolled and then msmdm that means the device management protocol as well so if you guys want you can go ahead and read about these two protocols as well this is actually something which will help you to understand things more relatively or let's say more fundamentally okay so now since we know how device compliance policies work in a nutshell the step number one will always be getting the device enrolled now once the device is enrolled and onboarded to intune Intune will go ahead and verify whether the device is compliant or not depending upon the set of information which it receives from the device okay so let's see everything in action now starting from configuring the notification settings for a specific policy so this is my browser where I have signed into endpoint.microsoft.com with my global admin account and now I'm going to click on devices and then I will click on compliance policy now the first option here itself gives you the privilege to create a new device compliance policy but I would recommend you to configure these settings first and then create a policy so let's click on a notification and then click on create notification the purpose of this configuration is to send an email to a user whenever a device is found as non-compliant now as you can see the first console itself is giving you the set of options which you can choose to include branding in the specific email which has been sent to the user the first option says that whether you want to include company logo or not then company name contact information and whether you want to include company portal website link or not now all these four options are customizable if you want you can enable all four of them or enable them as per your requirement i'm just going to type test and i'll click on next now this is the most important section because here exactly you are defining the subject as well as the message that will be sent to the respective user. Now for this demo I have already created an alert and which is non-compliant alert and what I'm mentioning in this email is some steps which the user can follow if in case their device is non-compliant. Okay, so if I'll click on edit and I'll show you the actual text which i have configured as you can see it says that hello user 
your device is a non-compliant device as per the policies defined by Concepts Work. If you are using a Windows device, then you can follow these steps. Now, these steps are basically the first effective step which you would be doing as an IT admin to send the sync from the device itself so that the current set of information or the most updated information should reach in tune as a service. Okay, but if in case let's say the user is using Android or iOS device, then I'm recommending the user to go ahead and check company portal application. So this is all you can do from the notification section. The next option is retire compliant device. So all the non-compliant device that exist in this particular instance or your instance of your tenant for Intune specifically, you can just retire them from this particular console. If you want, you can define locations as well, but the most important setting is compliance policy setting. And as you can see, the first option that I'm getting here says mark device with no compliance policy assigned as compliant or not compliant. According to me, not compliant makes much more sense. So I have enabled this particular option. If you want, you can enable enhanced jailbreak detection as well. And for compliance status validity period, I have defined two days. The default value is 30 days. So these are all the configuration that you can do for compliance policy settings. This means these four options. Now let's go ahead and create a new policy. Now in order to create, I'm going to click on create policy and then I'll click on Windows 10 or later. From this particular section, you can select your platform and I'm selecting Windows 10 or later and then I'll click on create. Now I'm going to define a name, let's say Windows device compliance. And I'm not going to define anything in the description section and I'll click on next. Now all the settings when it comes to device properties are divided into five different categories. The first one is device health, which helps you to check whether the device has BitLocker enabled or not, whether secure boot is enabled or not, or whether code integrity is enabled or not. Now, if by any chance you are planning to enable this particular option, make sure you have enabled secure boot as well, because this is something which is required as per the configuration. The next section is device properties, wherein you can define the version of uh, let's say the windows that's running on a pc as well as mobile devices this section implies if you have uh, sccm in place that means if you are using intune co-management okay if you're not using co-management then you can just leave this option don't configure this particular option now the next set of option is system security wherein you can define the password now this particular section only applies to mobile devices because for your Windows PC, a user will always have a password. That's why he or she is enrolling a specific device, right? Now, then you can choose whether you want to encrypt the data on the device or not. And when it comes to device security, you can choose whether it requires firewall, TPM, antivirus, or anti-spyware. So to make it simple, I'm just selecting these two options of antivirus and anti-spyware because this is something which we can easily verify with one of my test VM. Now, this particular section is moreover related to Defender, whether you require the machine to have Microsoft Defender anti-malware or not. Now, this last option, which we see here, which is Microsoft Defender ADP. Now, when you onboard machines to Defender ADP, there is a tag or there is a risk level that's been associated with every device and that are low, medium and high. So if you want a specific risk to be checked as well that can be done from here okay so for my policy I'm just saying that okay go ahead and check whether antivirus exists on the machine or not or whether anti spyware exists on the machine or not I'll click on next now let's say if any machine doesn't have these two features enabled what should happen next the first step would be to mark the device non-compliant immediately and then send an email to a user. And what should you send in the email is the same template that I have created. So I'll click on this one and then this particular template will be selected as the second step of sending information to a particular user once the device is marked as non-compliant device. I'll click on next and then I'm just going to say all users and then I'll click on next and that's it, my device compliance 
policy is created. Now, the moment I will click on create, this policy will be scoped to all the users. That means, let's say you have certain hybrid Azure AD joint machines onboarded to Intune already. In the next sync, these compliance policies will be applied and the compliance status can be checked from the portal itself. So now the next step is to show you guys how this compliance policy will be applied to a machine and which logs you should check. I'm going to switch to my machine, which I will enroll to Intune. So I'll fast forward the enrollment process. I'll just show you the method wherein or I'll just show you the step wherein the device is enrolled and we are triggering a restart so that the compliance check should be in place. Okay. So this is my machine, which I'm going to enroll with one of my user account and I'm doing the same BYOD method. I'm Azure AD joining this machine. Once this machine is Azure AD joined, it will be scoped to Intune. Once the device is enrolled, then it will be scoped to the compliance policy. Just to show you guys, the host name is cowork-001. I'll click on join. Now, once all this process is completed, I will log in with one of my user account that exists in Azure AD and I'll resume the video. So this is the same device which we tried registering and I'm signed in with my work or school account with this particular account which is enter at the redconceptswork.com and this is the same account with which I got this machine registered. So now if I'll click on this option and then I'll click on info as you can see, I'm getting this option now to trigger the sync. Now, this is exactly what I have mentioned in my email as well, that notification email, which a user will get if a specific device is not compliant. OK, so now let's switch to our browser and see what all information we are getting. So as you can see, if I'll go to the Azure AD section, I'm getting my device listed here and this device is showing as compliant. And if I'll go to endpoint.microsoft.com, if I'll refresh this particular section, I should get my new device listed over here. And as you can see, it is showing me cowork 001. And let's go to device compliance and let's see whether our policy is applied or not. And as you can see, this is the policy which we have just created. And let's see the outcome. Yes, this machine has anti-spyware as well as antivirus. Now, if any of this feature would not exist on that particular machine, it will be shown as not compliant. OK, so this is how the device compliance policies work for a specific scope that you have defined or for a specific settings that you have defined. Now, in order to check the dump of this policy that you have created or the configuration that you have created, just go to Graph Explorer and go to this particular link, which is device management forward slash device compliance policies. That's all you have to do. And then you click on run. Now, if you are new to Microsoft Graph and if you want to know how to operate Graph Explorer, then you can watch the graph series okay and as you can see i'm getting all the details which are moreover related to the device compliance policy that we have created okay now the last step which is pending is to check the event viewer now this is something which i have shown in my previous video as well but since we are talking about device compliance so let me show you that location once again which you need to check if you are coming across any issue moreover related to device compliance okay so now I'll go to Windows, sorry, Microsoft, and then I'll go to Windows. And then I'll go to that respective diagnostic folder. Let me scroll down. And as you can see, this is the specific folder which you need to check if your device is not getting compliant. OK, anyways, the portal itself will give you descriptive information in terms of knowing what and all going on. But if you want, you can enable these operational logs and check all these events. And if there are any errors, that will help you to know what exactly going wrong, as well as you can create an active or advanced diagnostic report as well. This is something which we will discuss when we'll talk about troubleshooting. But as of now, when it comes to compliance, this is all you need to do. 
Step number one, get the device enrolled. Step number two, check for the device state on the portal itself first. That what could be the reason why a device is showing as non-compliant. Okay. Now this is something which can be checked from here itself. You have to navigate to the respective device, click on device compliance, and then check for the device compliance policy, which is actually failing with the respective message or with the respective feature, which is not getting detected or not available on a specific device altogether. So this was all about knowing how the device compliance policies work. Let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this particular video. We have discussed about configuring device compliance policies for Windows as a platform, how to check the device state, how to take the dump of the entire policy that you have created with the help of Microsoft Graph, and how to check the logs that are related for device compliance or device enrollment in general, or the logs that can help you to troubleshoot a specific issue. We have also seen how to create the advanced report that you can give as a user to your IT team. Now, there are two set of devices which are completely isolated from each other. When I say isolated, not functional wise, but operational wise. Uh, that's the entry point for our next video, wherein we are going to talk about the comparison between the Azure AD object and the Intune device. Now, what do I mean by this? That as you can see, there is a device that exists in Azure AD, which is Go work-001 and the same device or a device with the same name also exists in Intune. But in a nutshell, these are two different devices altogether. So this is the entry point of our next video wherein we'll talk about the comparison and the differences between these two devices. So if you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe and feel free to share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.